In this lesson, the process for creating an AD report and the individual elements are explained using a case study. And hello again to this lesson, which has exactly one learning objective. By the end, you should know the elements of an AD report and be able to contribute to the creation of an AD report. This lesson has exactly one chapter. In this, a simple case study is presented in which a defect has occurred in a product and the AD process is used to deal with this failure correctly and in a structured manner. Let's start with the AD process using the example of a rivet connection. Before we get to the actual case study, a few comments on when an AD report is used. This is usually a document that is exchanged between the supplier and the customer in the event of a complaint. 8D stands for the eight mandatory disciplines that are required when processing a complaint to overcome the underlying problem. These are listed in the table on the left and we will go through them step by step. When I just said that the AD report is a document that is exchanged between the supplier and the customer in the event of a complaint, then I would like to make two comments. For the most part, this means a supplier who has delivered a product to an external customer who is complaining. However, an AD report can also be used in the same way if a defect occurs within a company to deal with this defect in an appropriate manner and eliminate it. And so we come to the case study. What we see here is a sub-assembly of a product. These two steel brackets are connected to each other with two rivets. This riveted connection must be able to transmit a certain amount of force. During a braking load test of the product, the required braking load was not met and the rivet connection was destroyed. An analysis revealed that one of the two rivets was missing. The actual riveting process consists of three steps as shown on the right. Firstly, equip the riveting machine with the brackets and the two rivets. Secondly, trigger the riveting process and thirdly, remove the riveted assembly and place it in a box. Before the actual AD process begins, some basic data or information must first be compiled. This includes information about the affected product, such as the product designation, the part number, which production lot is affected and how many products, which feature is being complained about. So what is the desired state compared to the actual state. Where was the defect discovered? Here, for example, in the test laboratory during the braking load test, whereupon the responsible person was alerted in accordance with the reaction plan in the control plan in order to initiate all further measures. Creating an AD is always a team effort. For this purpose, it can make sense to have a firmly defined basic team, which is supported by other experts if necessary. The question is who can contribute to finding and solving the problem. These can come from different areas of the company. Other responsible persons must also be informed about the complaint and the start of the AD. For our case study, the team consists of an 8D champion a person from production who is technically responsible for the riveting process, another person who is responsible for quality control and someone from engineering who is familiar with the design of the product. The problem is described again in this team. The description of the problem goes far beyond the simple statement that just a rivet is missing. In principle, the description of the deviation or the defect can be made verbally 
and in writing, also with photos and videos. A direct comparison of the desired state with the actual state is always helpful. The severity of the defect must also be classified so that the team knows if they are dealing with a significant or even critical failure. This means that this failure may result in human life being endangered or in a violation of the law. Then also very important, where is the defective part? When did the failure occur? And where was it discovered? How often did the failure occur? How far reaching is the failure? This means which products are possibly also affected and which customers, etc. As you can see, the description of the problem goes far beyond the description of the failure itself. With the information just gathered, actions must now be taken to limit the damage. This includes, for example, that any existing stock is blocked. The stocks are checked for defective parts. So generally, secure all suspicious stocks in circulation, including those that are already with the customer or are on the way there. Production can also be stopped until the cause of the defect has been rectified. After implementing mitigation measures, the root cause of the failure must be found and proven that this was really the cause. There are numerous methods and procedures available as tools, some of which are listed here as examples. This is the 5Y method, the cause and effect diagram, the data collection sheet, histograms, Pareto analysis, quality control charts, brainstorming, systematic questioning techniques, Shinin methodology, the correlation or scatter diagram, flowcharts or program flowcharts, and so on. Back to our case study with the riveting. The task of one person was to manually equip the riveting machine with the two brackets and the rivets. Then start the riveting process by hand and then remove the riveted assembly and place it in a box. The cause of the missing rivet was that the rivet was simply forgotten by the person. This cause was proven by the fact that it was possible to re-enact the riveting process even if a rivet is missing. After the cause of the failure has been clearly identified, it must be ensured that such a failure does not repeat itself. Improvement measures must therefore be defined. Suitable tools for identifying and evaluating suitable improvement measures are, for example, the FMEA, the Continuous Improvement Process, control charts, for example, for attributive characteristics, statistical process control, historical data from comparable processes or calculations regarding the probability of occurrence of the failure. And the same applies to detecting the defect. For our case study, the following improvement measure was determined. It must be possible to automatically detect the presence of both rivets. This should be done visually with the camera and the riveting process can only be triggered when both rivets are present. The previously defined improvement measures must be introduced permanently and their effectiveness must be proven. For the permanent implementation, our case study includes introducing the automatic camera check, the control plan and the work and test instructions must also be updated. Then the effectiveness of the introduced improvement measures must be confirmed by tests. After that, the containment measures from point 3 can be lifted again. To prevent this failure from occurring again or a similar one, the FMEA must be updated. The knowledge gained and the new way of working should also be shared throughout the company 
in order to avoid similar mistakes at other locations. This approach is called Yokoten. This abbreviation stands for sharing the best ideas. The eighth and last point is the conclusion in the AD process. This means that the results must be documented and archived in such a way that they can be easily found again if necessary. The AD can then be closed as a team event. This should be linked to an appreciation of the team by the supervisor. The performance can also be publicized within the company, for example, by posting it on the bulletin board, at the works meeting, in the company newspaper, on the internet, and can also be associated with a small bonus. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the five most important key messages. The purpose of the AD is to identify, correct and eliminate recurring problems. The AD process is a team effort. Members must be trained for the AD process. The team must have knowledge of the product and the production process. Team members need to know common methods of problem-solving techniques and quality tools. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that, take care and see you next time. Bye.